Next topic, design principles and technology. We first looked at the data that we added with the IDE and we recognized that there was actually a lot of repetition in what we call the meta model. Every object has a name, has properties and has some sort of relationship with other objects. We identified the, the development object and every single development object would be stored in a single occurrence in the repository. Types of development objects are component, component entity, component field, component label, modeled entity, modeled field, modeled key, model relationship, include library, etc., etc., etc. From the set of development objects, we identified a subset that would have a special meaning. We call them the principal development object. A principal development object is just a development object and has the same characteristics as a regular development object. But it is special. All types of principal development objects are similar in size and complexity and therefore make the perfect logical work unit. Meaning it can be opened in an editor. It can be compiled, exported, imported, saved and loaded to, fr and, to, to and from a work area. Principal development objects are root objects in the meta model and are not owned by some other object. They are like files on a file system. But this exercise had its impact. The version 9 meter model did not completely adhere to these definitions and therefore we took out any inconsistencies. The version 9 model object was too big to be a logical work unit. The model entity was a much better candidate. We took out the model as an object and introduced the model entity as a principal development object. So in version 10, it is the modeled entity that you open in an editor, export and or save to a file. It is the modeled entity that will be maintained in your source control system. But also the version 9 library object did not fit the profile. And therefore we, we split up the library into different types. This allows you to have an include library as a logic work unit next to a message library or a menu library. Examples of principal development object types are component, modeled entity, include write library, message library, menu library, startup shell, etc. As part of the object normalization, we normalized the properties of all development object types as well. We looked at the purpose of the property and whether a similar property exists for other UDA types. We looked at the data type and the complexity of properties because th this dictates the type of editor required to edit such a property. For example, the description property is of a very simple type and a basic text input control is sufficient to edit it. Whereas script container properties, which hold the triggers, operations and entries, are of a very complex type. Such properties require additional facilities to assist while editing, like syntax highlighting, parameter help, code search, module navigation, you name it. We also looked at the importance of a property and or the average amount of time spent on editing it. Important properties and often edited properties need to be easily accessible, whereas unimportant properties or almost never touched properties can be put away behind an option button of some sort. Let's have a quick look at some of the property data types and their implicit, implicit editing capabilities. A property is either of type text or some other type. The text properties can be divided into single and multi-line properties. This is important because the editor of a single line property typically uses a very small amount of height, whereas multi-lines vary from two to who knows how many lines and therefore including the need of scroll bars and other means of navigation. Single lines can already be of a complex type, meaning that the text must adhere to a certain syntax. Syntax highlight and code completion might be in place for such properties. The multi-line can be divided into, for example, comment and code. Comment is typically uninterpreted text, but might include text markup for better readability. Spell checking might be an interesting feature to assist writing common. Code is interpreted text and must adhere to a syntax, for example, Proxscript, JavaScript or HTML. 
all types of code can be edited using the same editing facilities, including syntax highlighting, folding, auto-completion, parameter help, etc., whereas only the syntax rule differ. We can now have a look at the types of real estate that can be given to a property editor. The IDE is divided into editors, one for every principal UDO loaded for editing. Every editor takes all of the IDE's real estate and therefore only one can be visible at a time. A second editor can be split off in an alternative IDE window as I demonstrated in the first movie. An editor is divided into worksheets. Every worksheet takes all of the editor's real estate. So only worksheet is vis visible at the time. The worksheet is used to edit the important and often used properties like a principal UDA structure, its script, or its layout property. A worksheet is divided into editing areas, always three of them. The left and the right one provide utilities to assist with the actual editing done in the middle one. The left editing area is typically occupied by one or more toolboxes assisting with the creation of new objects. Every toolbox takes all of the available real estate in the left area, and therefore a tab is required to switch toolbox. And something similar, the right editing area is occupied by one or more property inspectors assisting with making modifications to the selected objects or object in the middle area. Every property inspector takes all of the available real estate, a tab is used to switch property inspectors. And this is it. More editing variations do not exist. All editors shame share this same setup. So after normalizing the data, we now also have normalized the editors, the user interface. Normalized editors have a positive impact on usability. They are consistent and therefore recognizable and predictable. If you know one editor, you know all of them. But also from an architectural point of view, it's good to have normalized editors. It allows for a single implementation and therefore less code, less bugs, improved maintainability and therefore cheaper. So what can we say about technology? We had a bunch of techno te technologies that we could choose from. We could rebuild, revamp Univest 9, but then we had to stick to modal. We could make an extension on Eclipse, but then we required a whole bunch of Java developers. We could do it in Visual Studio. Eventually we chose to rebuild in Univest. And the arguments are shown here. A really important arg argument, although it was not a key requirement, but it was to eat our own dog food. We would, we knew upfront, we would in improve and build new features in Uniface to make this new ID possible. We would have then a very high focus on usability on those new, new features, a very short feedback cycle between the designer and the user. Also the available skill set was, uh, was a factor. Um, we did not have Java developers, so a Java solution would not really help. We also wanted to stick to our repository. We, ha we have a lot of customers that are using our repository and we did not want changes too much. And also, we tend to outlive all those hypes, if you want to call it a hype. We have a dependency on a third party environment and we tend to always outlive those. After 30 years, we'll steer here. But there are some downsides as well. We don't have any integrated environment with other technologies. Yeah. If you use the Uniface IDE, it's mainly used to build Uniface applications and not to build Java applications. And also we cannot benefit from any external communities. That is a real downside, but still we chose to rebuild it in Uniface. But even after choosing Uniface to build the thing in, we had to make another choice, and that was the choice of the GUI technology that we're going to use. Looking at the mockups that I just showed, showed you, 
you can see that we needed incredibly rich data heavy kind of front end. And we knew that the current Windows based GUI layer of Uniface would not provide, would not be able to provide that. So we were looking for an alternative and we decided to go with an HTML based GUI front end. Our advantage of an HTML is that it is incredibly rich and flexible. If you combine HTML5 capabilities with the CSS3 capabilities, it's incredible. It's really unlimited possibilities. Another advantage would be the pres implicit presentation logic split. And I will talk about that later on a bit more when I'm going to talk about architecture. Also, we think that HTML is the future. So it was good to start investing in, an, in HTML as a GUI technology. Of course, there are some downsides. Yeah, we first had to make this HTML GUI layer. So there's additional work on our backlog. We needed to create a new component type to build a new wit widget set. It's new technology, so there are always unknowns, which increases the risk. And the, the pros of unlimited possibilities is also a con. Yeah, experimenting all those unlimited possibilities takes a lot of time. And when do you stop with it? So now we know how the new idea will look like. We know the new meta model. We know the technology that we're going to use, including the going technology. The next step is designing the architecture. And I'm going to talk about that in the next movie.